Thanksgiving really is such a great time of year. And I know I kind of act a little bit overexcited about every holiday. Thanksgiving anymore is getting overlooked by all of the Christmas. You never would have thought I would have said that. But even though I love Christmas, we need to enjoy Thanksgiving. It is such a great time, whether it is with friends or family. It is such a wonderful time to get together, share a beautiful day, meal, and make something special. This is a little bit of an updated pumpkin pie. It is not a baked pumpkin pie. And I will admit, it is not just a simple throw together and done pie, but it is fairly easy. And if you follow these steps, this no bake pumpkin pie is going to be a hit on Thanksgiving day or uh, any day because it is so good. It has a pumpkin pudding filling and you are gonna love this. To start, you are just gonna make a ginger snap crust. What? Yeah, a ginger snap crust. It is that good. Just use some botten ginger snap cookies. Yes, I said botten. That is how you're gonna make this crust and it is simple. Just throw the ginger snap cookies right into the food processor and then add some crystallized ginger. Don't worry if you don't have it or don't wanna buy it, you don't have to use it, but it really drives home that ginger flavor which pairs so well with the pumpkin. And you know, when you add these great extra flavors like this, everyone's gonna be like, um, this is amazing. It's gonna be those little secrets that are gonna make your items even better. Grind the ginger and ginger snaps up together until they're pretty finely ground. And then you just wanna add in some sugar. I know it seems like the ginger snaps themselves are already sweet enough, but the sugar you need when you make a crust. It melts in the oven and then rehardens to make that good crisp crust. Process the sugar in and then just add some melted butter. Once the melted butter is mixed in, you can just put all of that right into a springform pan. I'm using a springform pan for this because it kind of gives the idea of a tart shell, but you don't have to have a tart pan and it comes out super easy once it's done. So just press them into a bottom of a nine inch springform pan and go up the sides quite a ways, a little bit taller than a normal pie crust. You can just use your hand to evenly do it and then finish it off with the bottom of a measuring cup or just a regular glass so you get a good firm packed bottom in it. Once it's ready to go, just place it into your preheated oven, let it bake until it's golden brown and just begin to be fragrant and then pull it out and let it cool. If the edges begin to slump a little bit while it's in the oven or right when you bring it out, don't fret. Once you pull it out, just use the back of a spoon in your hand and just kind of press it down again and press it up the side. It will still be soft and you'll be able to fix it. Then once it cools, it will be perfect. And you're filling it, so who's gonna see the inside of the crust anyway? Set that aside to cool and then you can make this amazing pumpkin pie filling that is like a pudding and literally I can just eat it with a spoon. I have, I have eaten it with a spoon. Before we start anything, I really like to get some of the moisture out of the pumpkin that we're gonna use. I know it sounds odd because you're never gonna do this, but it makes a huge difference because there's a lot of moisture and water in pumpkin. So if you just lay out some paper towels on a sheet pan and then put the pumpkin that we're gonna use right on it and spread it out, put some more paper towels on top, you are instantly gonna see them soaking up all that extra liquid. And what that is gonna help is us not to have a really runny filling pudding later on in this pie. And it's gonna make sure that it is really good and not kind of watery. So this is an important step and I know it seems odd, but it makes a difference. So just put those on it and then set it aside. To start with this, you just wanna separate your eggs. You, at this point, just need the egg yolks. So just separate your eggs and put the yolks right into a bowl. Once your egg yolks are ready, you just wanna quick get your gelatin to bloom. Okay, I don't know if you've used gelatin before, but it's kind of a magical ingredient. It makes things set up into an amazing custard form and it takes no baking. And all you need to do is let it bloom, which means putting the powdered gelatin in a liquid so it slowly becomes a gel in that liquid. So just take a little bit of milk and then sprinkle a package of gelatin right over the top and then set that aside and let it go together. That's all you need to do at this point. Next, you just wanna put some whole milk and some heavy cream into a saucepan. I know, it sounds very rich. It is really rich, and that is important. It is Thanksgiving, this is a pie, you want to enjoy it, well, let's go all the way. These rich flavors really are important. They make the outcome so much better. And then just a little bit of salt. 
After your milk and cream, you just wanna add some dark brown sugar. Some of it goes with the milk and cream and then some of it we're gonna put in the egg yolk. So just put a little bit of dark brown sugar in with that milk and then stir that together and then set it on the stove over medium to medium high heat. You just want the milk to start steaming before you use it. As the milk is coming up to temperature, you can just beat your egg yolks to break them up and then add the rest of the dark brown sugar. After the brown sugar, then just add some cornstarch to those egg yolks and whisk it all together until it's completely combined. Yes, we are using both cornstarch and gelatin. This is just gonna make sure you have a really thick and well set up end result, which is important. When your milk is starting to steam, you just wanna temper your egg yolks. We've talked about this before. This just means slowly bring those egg yolks up to the temperature of the milk without dumping it all in and just making scrambled egg yolks. So slowly ladle in some of that steaming milk, whisking constantly. And then once you have a few ladlefuls in there, just dump it back into the hot milk and then stir it until it becomes really thick. This is really only gonna take about a minute once it's back on the heat. It's gonna activate all that cornstarch and the egg yolks and thicken up into a beautiful pudding. As you can see, you can just run your finger down the back of a wooden spoon and you can tell it is a pudding. Remove it from the heat and right away you just wanna strain it right into the bowl of a food processor. You don't have to do this in a food processor, but it really helps everything mix together much more easily and ensures that there are no lumps. Straining does that also. So strain it right into the bowl and then add in your bloom gelatin. As you can see at this point, it looks really kind of weird and gross, but now it is gonna melt into this hot pudding mixture and become homogenous and then set everything up. Put in some vanilla right into the mixture and then dump in those spices that make a pumpkin pie what it is. Some cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, and a little bit of cloves, and then a little bit of ground ginger. Mix that together until it's combined. After the spices and vanilla are mixed in, we can just finish off with a little bit of molasses. This just really drives home that little bit of undertone. It does not overpower, but it just helps flavor it where you taste it and think, oh, this is extra good. Then you just wanna put in that pumpkin that we worked on earlier. I know it seems like it'd be hard to get off the paper towels, but it's so moisture laden that it's really easy. Just fold it over itself on the paper towels and then put it right into the food processor. Mix that all together till it's completely combined and then just pour it right into a bowl and let it cool to room temperature. You just don't wanna pour this hot pudding mixture right into your crust because it could kind of create a soggy crust. Once the pudding is at room temperature, you can just pour it right into that ready crust. Now, depending on how you put your crust in and even me, you're gonna have extra pudding. And let me tell you something. This is a good thing because you can just eat the pudding. You can eat it right out of the bowl. You can put it in the fridge and eat it later. It's delicious, don't worry. Leave just a little bit of the crust exposed when you're pouring it in there. That way, the topping, which is gonna be a delicious and sweet meringue, has a place to stop and so it doesn't just fall over the pie. And then put the whole thing right into the fridge until it is chilled and well set. This is important. You want that gelatin to set up before you put the meringue on. So you can actually make this the day before Thanksgiving or whenever your meal is and be ready to go the next day, make the meringue and say, whew, that was easy. You don't need to bake the pie that day. Perfect. Once your pie is well chilled and you are ready to make the meringue, you just wanna to put together the five egg whites that we did not use before and some sugar. Put them right into the bowl of a stand mixer and then put that over a little bit of water bath or a little bit of simmering water on the stove and then whisk it until all the sugar is melted and it registers about 160 degrees on a thermometer. That just means that all the sugar is gonna be completely melted and you are ready to mix. Put it right onto your stand mixer and then whip it until it is meringue and cool to room temperature. This can take anywhere from three to 10 minutes depending on what type of mixer you have. As that meringue is whipping up, just put in a little bit of vanilla. It just flavors it a little bit and let it keep whipping until it's at room temperature. Once the meringue is ready to go, just take your pie right out of that springform pan. See, that is why a springform is wonderful. It is so easy to take off. Once you take out that springform pan, just put that meringue on however you want it. I'm just dolloping mine because it is beautiful, just rustic. So put it on and then just to brulee the top slightly and brown it and dry it out just a little bit, put it right into a preheated oven and let it just brown up. Then you are ready to go.
I know you're thinking, okay, this was kind of a long process, but let me tell you something. This is Thanksgiving. That is when it is worth doing this. You're gonna have a beautiful pie, a beautiful day, and everyone is gonna love the effort you put into it. If you agree, make sure to like this video and click subscribe to become part of the Gray Boxer family. I love to have you watch these videos and hear about your holiday traditions and what you're doing for Thanksgiving. So let me know how everything is working out for you. And until next time, happy Thanksgiving.